All right, guys, I'm going to try to finish up uh, mailing peppers out today. About a month ago, I sit here just like this, or stood here like this at this table. Uh, it took me about two days to go through and pack up the peppers that I had at that time to take care of all of the early requests. I had 86 boxes. I took those to the post office, dropped them off. The lady told me, come back in a couple hours. No way she could figure them up that fast. So I come on back here, and a couple hours later, I went back to pick up my bill and to pay for it. And um, I don't have to tell you how much it cost. It was on up there. But it'll be worth it uh, for everybody to be have the peppers and be able to grow them out and see how they do and maybe share with other people. We'll just uh, spread the seeds around. What I'm trying to do right now is get all of the final requests uh, finished up, everything up until uh, August 1st. I think that was my deadline. Uh, I said after that I got to stop. So I'll go through one by one, look at the notes, see what they wanted, and then put them in the box, seal it up, and hopefully I can finish this stuff up today. But I'm making a few changes here. Let me show you uh, some different peppers I got this time. First off, the one that I think just about everybody was most interested in was the scorpions right here. Most of them, this batch actually has the little uh, signature scorpion tails on the end of them right here. Kind of, that's exactly what everybody wants to see when they're looking at the scorpions. Uh, some of them bigger, some of them like this right here, kind of look more like a habanero. But these are all the scorpion peppers right here. Right here, side by side, the uh, orange habanero, kind of uh, short, squatty looking, and this is the date teal. And from looking around, this is not the uh, original date teal. I think this is what they call the super date teal, which is a cross between a date teal and uh, something else. I forget which one it was, but if you look up super date teal, I think this is the picture that you're going to see right here. The original date teal, I believe, was a little bit shorter. But when you put these in the box, there's absolutely no way that you can get the two of them confused. Just like with the first uh, shipment that I had, I don't have very many of these little cherry bombs right here. I only have one really good plant going, so I can't get but so much off of it. This right here is something that a few people got in the first orders, not very many. This is a mulatto, M-U-L-A-T-O. It's kind of like a little uh, small chocolate bell. Uh, but it is not sweet. And lastly, these are the super chilies. These things are extremely prolific, very small plants, but I mean, they just put out a ton of peppers. And I've, I've got plenty of those. And I've also got some uh, red cayennes right here. Had a few plants in the greenhouse, been going for a while. Just went ahead and picked some of those. And when I put both of these in the same box, I tried to do this so that nobody could get anything mixed up. And it's very obvious which one's a super chili and which one is a cayenne if you happen to get both of them. There's no way to get them mixed up. When I finished up, I had 39 more boxes. Took them to the post office. They gave me a total of 125. And there was about a dozen people overseas. Instead of trying to mail peppers, I'm going to cut the peppers open, get the seeds out, try to get them dried out, and then I'll mail them to you guys. I'm going to do it this time. I talked to somebody recently who said, you know, it might not be a good idea uh, sending peppers across borders and things like that. You never know how different countries feel about seeds. So uh, I said I'd send the people some right now. I'll, uh, I'll do what I said, and then after this, I probably won't be shipping anything uh, to foreign countries. Just keep them right here in the U.S. So that would take care of the peppers, uh, getting that done. And uh, the next thing was the Hastings corn. And I got a few people who wanted some corn seed as well. Right here I got some Hastings prolific corn. It's that corn I had growing here in the greenhouse. A lot of people expressed interest in that because it was an open pollinated variety. I will say this, if you're looking for a very sweet corn, uh, Hastings is not going to be it. I'd put it down there in the category with that golden bantam somewhere down there. But being open pollinated, you don't have any trouble whatsoever saving the seed from it. I let this stuff dry on the stalk real good, uh, then shucked it off. And I did a test planting just to make sure that it would come up. I put 24 seeds in here, three by three, eight rows. All 24 came up, I had two of them come up a little bit late. 
but got 100% germination out of these seeds, so I know they're pretty good. Uh, back in, I guess, two or three months ago, whenever it was, there were several people who had uh, inquired about getting the seed, and I said, I don't have any right now. Let me grow it out first. Well, I've got the seed now, so if you, uh, you guys can send me the PM and uh, let me know where to send this to, I'll send you some corn seed. As far as getting this corn seed off, it's easy like this. Once your corn is dried, it'll come right off. You don't want to worry too much about them little pieces on the end there. But this is some good corn seed right here. I think I probably started with about that much. And I planted inside here in the greenhouse and I got some more going on outside. Doesn't take but a little handful to get yourself started. Alright, so that takes care of uh, the peppers. All that pepper sharing and uh, seeds and stuff like that. And also the, uh, the corn. Get that taken care of. Tying up some loose ends right now. Uh, the only other thing to direct your attention to, which is a couple of things. Uh, the first one, the obvious, my shorts right here. Y'all remember them Def Leppard pants I had? Well, I got the shorts to go with them. About the time they get torn and worn like this, that's when they just getting broke in. And the other thing is these Moringa trees right here. If y'all remember, this one I put... I put a bucket of uh, regular garden soil in there, then I dumped a bucket of uh, goat manure in it, and then some more soil. This one right here got the regular potting soil uh, come out of the bag. That was the bigger plant when I put them in the tubs. I want you to look at this bad boy right here. All the instructions I see on Moringa say no animal manure. Stay away from animal manure. Keep it dry. And you can see this one right here jumped off real quick. Still got most of the leaves on it, even the lower leaves. These things nice, filled out nice and green. That one over there in the regular pot mix, lower leaves done fell off. The top growth is nowhere near this one right here. So something to be said for using goat manure. What I'm going to do right now, this thing is getting up there kind of tall. I don't want it going much taller. I'd like to have it bushed out. So while everybody's watching, snip, snip. Now he go uh, go ahead and bush out. From my experience, it's been tasting like peanuts. Got a kind of a peanutty taste to them. I ain't going to worry with trying to dry these things out. They do fine just like this. So, at least I got me something off of these trees right here. I don't know how many nutrients and vitamins and minerals and all this. Probably not enough to justify all the time and effort thus far, but... If I can get this thing to go on and bush out, make a nice uh, moringa tree like it's supposed to, we'll be in business. That's not bad either. See, I'll take care. And Lord willing, I'll see you next time.